Hello guys, welcome to Daily Tech. So today we're going to be looking at some more hidden features for your S22 Ultra. And this goes without saying that some of these tips and tricks can be used with your S22 series devices. It doesn't have to only be your S22 Ultra. Before we get into the video, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of you who've been taking the time out of your busy schedules to watch the videos, to like, to share, to comment. I do enjoy reading the comments, so do keep that coming. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. When Samsung implemented the feature that allowed you to change your color palette um, across the whole operating system with the change of wallpaper, that really got me excited as I love colors. I love having colors around the device. So if you came in here and chose a wallpaper and uh, you went into the color palette, there were different colors adapted to that wallpaper. And the good thing about it was it applied to almost everything in your phone. So it applied to your text message, it applied to apps, it applied to notifications. But there is one part of your device that these color changes do not affect. I'd like you to take a guess, pause the video and put your comments below. Let's see which other part of the device you guys think um, did not change. If you chose the volume button, then you would be correct. If I was to press the volume button, it stays the same. It's still the same thing, just a dark mode variation, no changes to it. So I decided to make my own customizations and this is what it looks like. You can see the green on black, this is in dark mode and if I was to expand it, you can see the difference. Now we've gone from having just one option to having a few options that you can play with. So uh, you've got this and once you apply it, you can jump in there and see what it looks like and this applies to every other theme you can find out here so this is a way to customize your, your volume button panel and just make it a little bit different so it's not the same blade and style and if you wanted to return return it back to how it was before all you have to do is tap on this to remove it and it's gone back to normal now the next thing you could do is it allows you to also create your own customization what you need to do is click on here and as you can see here every little dot you see corresponds to what you want to edit so this little blue dot here if you were to change the color it will change the color for this icon there this blue dot here if you were to change the color it will change the color for this volume icon here every dot there corresponds to what you would like to change so let me give you a good example I want to change the icon for the volume buttons so I would tap on this and uh, let's go for something more okay let's go with that All right saturation yeah that's better and you can see they, they all changed and when you're done creating what you wanted to create you can tap on here to see what it will look like when you've got your dark mode on or when your dark mode is turned off. Or you can download it and put in the name of your themes for your volume panel. And that was how I created this one here, which I've been using. Now that we've done that, the next step will be to show you how to get this feature done. For those of you who've seen my previous videos, you know what to do when I say good luck. If you're new to it, what you need to do is go into your Galaxy store and search for good luck. I've got good luck right here open, so I will tap on it to open it up. What you need to look for now is Sound Assistant. And Sound Assistant might not be here in the unit section, so you need to go to the family section. And here you should see your Sound Assistant. Download and install if you do not have it. And once you do that, you can then click on make your own volume panel colors and there you will see the recommended themes for you to use and you could create your own themes now while we're currently in this uh, volume here if you were to tap on your volume let me bring this up here right now you can see it is says 103 if you wanted to reduce your volume or mute your volume once you tap on this all you have to do is tap this and it mutes it and if you tap it again it takes it back to the level it was before so now it's on 98 tap on this it takes it to zero you tap on this it takes it back to 98 so this is one of the shortcuts on how to um, mute your volume button and just take it back to the level at which it was before so you don't have to drag it up all the way back there now that we've done that there is the next thing which we need to look into 
The next thing we're going to be looking at is how to customize your volume panel. So let's jump in right here and let me show you a few things you can do to your volume panel. So once you've toggled this on, you get the option to edit this. So we're going to click on custom and right here, you get the option to, if you click on, you see here move, we get the option to move your volume button. So if, if your phone is too big for you and you wanted to move your volume button a little bit to the lower side to enable you reach when you press the volume button, you can then tap on your volume button and see where it currently is to allow ease of use. So let me see if I can make this easier for you. So if I was trying to use the volume button, tap on here and it's right here and I can easily adjust it accordingly. If when you use the volume button, you've always wanted it to be on the left hand side, then this will be your lucky day because you tap on that and it comes to the left. So when you click on it, it now shows you on the left. If you're left handed, that'll be awesome for you. But for me, it stays on the right. The next thing is the show volume level. When you unbox your phone, the way your volume comes in, it always comes in this way. So you look at it and you increase and decrease and it doesn't show you anything there. But when you customize it, you're able to show you what level it is. At the moment you see, when you press the button once, it goes incremental five. And this is the way I've customized mine. Normally out of the box, it will come in an increment of 10. I will show you how to reduce that so you're able to adjust your temp your volume to a more particular level. But if you wanted to be able to see the numbers when you increase and reduce the volume, then this would be how to do it by clicking on show volume level. Now, the next thing there is your floating button. The floating button is just your volume button, um, so which would also be useful for those of you that are left-handed and would not like to and always want to have access to the volume button. So you can move this here and every time you tap on it, it brings up the volume button. So let's move this to the left and every time you tap on it, there your volume button is. Allows you to be able to move your volume button, floating volume button, any way you like it to be, to bring for ease of access. The next option here is sync position. So it allows you to move this floating button here and move your volume button together. So as you can see, anywhere I move it, it moves accordingly. Move it. If I touch on it, it's right there. If I move it here, it moves. If I move it here, it moves. Next thing we're going to look at is the expanded panel. While I'm showing you a few tips and tricks, I'm just going to show you a quick tip with the S Pen. There we go. Don't worry, I'm not. There we go. Next line. Next line. All right. So this is the expanded option, which ha which occurs when you tap on your volume button and then touch here to show you this expanded section. Right here, you've got your show toolbar functions. Tapping on this will remove the toolbar. If you want a cleaner look, I tend to like mine this way. So I have a lot of options to customize, to change the, the audio to Bluetooth or directly from my phone or to use the live transcribe equalizer and a few other options there. The next thing is the app volume. I tend to leave mine on so that when I'm in an app, I can always control the volume of that specific app. So this is why I leave mine on that way. The next one here is Bluetooth metronome. Bluetooth metronome allows you to sync your audio and video together, especially when using Bluetooth, because sometimes Bluetooth devices tend to cause a lag. So Bluetooth metronome will allow you to match your audio and your video together. I did not give you guys this option when we're having um, the GOS update issues with YouTube being out of sync because Bluetooth metronome wouldn't have been able to do anything there because it was Samsung software preventing the audio from being in sync. So every time I use the metronome to adjust it, it always went back to what it was before, which was out of sync, which was why I did not tell you guys about this during that period. But right now, you should be able to use it if you've got any silly lags from, from the Bluetooth device itself. And this option here allows you to control this right from your volume panel. So if you tap on the volume button and tap on here, then you have this metronome here. And once your Bluetooth device is connected, you will to delay the audio or speed up the audio to help you match the audio and the visual experience. So do remember, we are still in sound assistant. 
when you go to good luck and you go to sound assistant if you tap on customize volume panel and custom here then you have the options to do what you want to do let's look at the next one remember when i talked to you about um you're increasing your volume in increments of five now if you looked here the number here is 85 if i pressed it one more time it is 80 which means it increases in an increment of five normally it comes this way with increments of 10 so 70 60 50 but i realized that i wasn't able to hit the exact level of accuracy when i was increasing the volume it was always maybe too high or too low so if this was uh, this is an issue for you you can move this to eight nine or whatever number you want or you could move it to one to allow you a very high level of precision when increasing your volume level as it increases 52 53 54 and and such but i left mine at five so it's not too slow and it's not too fast so i'm able to adjust it accordingly as much as i want to yeah. so this is what samsung calls step volume as it goes in the steps of five at the moment and if it was here it would be going in the steps of ten the next one i heard about it i was thinking to myself there is no way this actually works but it did now let me show you something so right here you can see fingerprints and you can see i've got one fingerprint added right but this is one thumb tap again come on next thumb next thumb one thumb come on next thumb and it's actually pretty fast I'm not quite sure if it's a bug but I did try my other fingers just to see if there was something wrong and it did not work it was just the fingers which I had added to it so you go into your settings and let's go to biometrics and security and right here you can see fingerprints right then I'm going to add a fingerprint and what you what you need to do right here is you go one finger or one thumb and the other thumb based on which finger you want to so if you're going with your thumbs you do this and you do this and you continue to do it until it is set up and once that's done you're not able to use two thumbs with one fingerprint registration which is insane but what if i told you there was a better method of viewing your notification history with your phone locked you swipe from here and you're able to access over 30 days of your notification which is insane and i said over 30, 30 days you can make it over a year you can make it indefinite but it is there to see and you can view every notification every single notification or you could clear it out here the good thing is you're able to filter out which notifications you would like to see so we're going to good luck and we go into naughty star there we go and right here you can see all the notifications we've received and tapping on this three dots here gives you gets you to settings and in settings here you can see all the application list and right here you can turn off apps that you would not like to receive notifications from if you went back out this is using on lock screen this is what gave you the option to access notice that directly from your lock screen which is the way i've been using mine as that's the easiest method to do this is the notification period like i said no limit seven days 30 days six months and a year and if we were to go back and this is the start icon settings on the lock screen and this is where it occurs let me change the color to make it easier for you to see right here as you can see this is where you swipe up and it gives you access to notice that but I don't need mine to show because I know where it is. So I'll leave it there and make it transparent enough and save it. I'm sure some of us have downloaded apps that have started doing things in the background in terms of showing us adverts or trying to access various parts of our phones that we are not aware of. Or even so, waking up your device when it is sleeping, which is not something we would like because this runs down your battery. So, nice catch allows you to be able to log all this information. Right here, you can see vibration history, which says shows a, show a list of applications that made vibrations. So if you were to tap on it, you can see notice that made a vibration three hour, 40 minutes, three hour, 29, three hours, 22 minutes ago. Let's go on to detect commercial. So this is actually quite important. If there is any app that has tried to display an advert and you're not aware of it, this will be to tell you this was the app that showed you that advert 
and this is the screen wake up history this will be quite a lot because i've been going in and out of my phone so as you can see we've got the android system system ui it's all been android system here which is good because it means i'm the one who's been waking up my device as you can see android system power key also here you can see a double tap which is also good because you can now tell the method which your phone was working up which is extremely good so if an app woke my phone up it would show there that it was an app that woke my phone up this is the pretty useful setting to have the way to get this would be to go into your good love go to the family section and install nice catch and in nice catch here you have these options right there for your use while we're on the issue of uh, privacy and apps doing things in the background that we want to know about this feature here is quite useful because sometimes we, we download apps that we don't actually know what those apps are doing in the background and these apps will request a few permissions that you would need to accept able to use those apps this is just a safeguard that alerts you as to when something is going on first to type in let's say epic wallpapers here and copy it right i've copied it it's now in my clipboard once you copy it and let's put it here it lets you know that phone pasted from your clipboard it automatically lets you know that something has happened and this app has pasted item from your clipboard so even if an app in your background was trying to do this in a, in a sneaky way you'll be alerted to that effect and the way to do this is to, to go into your settings, go to privacy, scroll down here and just toggle on alert when clipboard is accessed. And this has been it guys. If you want to see my other videos on hidden features for S22, uh, for your S22 Ultra or your S22 series, then I will leave a link in the description. And as always, remain safe guys. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to leave a like, share and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one.